Welcome back to Kevin's Trooper Channel. We got a little problem in the KTC garage today. We're going to fix and I thought I'd bring you guys along with me. The problem is that we now have two 220 volt machines on the welding cart and only one 220 plug. Nobody's got time to be unplugging and plugging back in back and forth whenever you're trying to get a project finished. So what I thought I would do is I'm going to put a panel on the welding cart that has two receptacles for 220 volt and then we'll run a cord where we'll have one 220 plug we can plug into the wall. It's going to be a pretty cool project and I'm going to bring you guys along coming up. So here's the plan. I'm going to be putting some 220 receptacles in these boxes and then I'm going to be mounting them by drilling and trap tapping some holes right here and then we'll have a cord that comes off that we can plug into the wall and these receptacles will be right here where we can easily plug them in should be a great little project but let me warn y'all i'm no electrician i'm gonna drill out these openings that they have here in the back of the boxes and then we're gonna drill and tap some holes so that we can screw them straight to the cart now I would have gone with smaller bolts than this but of course as always my local hardware store didn't have all the combination of things that I was that I needed they were out of quarter inch taps okay so the first order of business is I'm gonna try to get these drilled out first and see how that goes they've got this weird little hump in the metal here that I'm gonna have to try to get on top of Now I'm thinking I'm going to drill that out with this one. Should work pretty well. And we're getting a little bit off there. And by the way, if you are drilling a hole and it gets a little bit off, what you can do is go right in the edge and put you another, another point. And a lot of times you can walk it back. That worked really well. That should work. And we're gonna do the same thing here. Well, I'm just dying for a drill press, guys. Oh, wait a minute, that whole thing knocked out on its own. Okay, I'll take it. Is that what they're meant to do? Are those meant to knock out of there? Well, whether they're meant to or not, they are. See how that knocked out of there? Now I can just open the hole up. All right, I'll take it. Now the next order of business is I'm gonna mark exactly where I want these. What I was thinking here, guys, you see, is this is gonna come plug it into the wall, into the outlet, and I want it to be kind of like this. Right there. And then if this one's going to be here, that will put this one here. And that should be my two holes. All right, slight change of plans. I'm not going to try to drill and tap this because I don't think I quite have enough meat here to try to catch a, a, a good thread on that. I thought I would, but after looking at it again, I really don't. So I'm just going to put a bolt straight through. Come on, come on baby, get on there. I'm about as non-left handed as it gets. Yeah, that's gonna be cool. This back one's gonna be really tough. Okay, you gonna go on there? Perfect, that's rare. <laughs> All right, I got the lock washer on. These are some tiny, tiny little, little washers and nuts in here. Tiny nuts are always hard to work with. Now comes for the dangerous part. <laughs> Me doing electrical wiring. All right, let's see if we can get these wires out of here. Now what I'm doing here is I'm not going all the way through the wire, I'm just scoring it. Just so when I go to tear it, it'll have a place to tear. 
All right, I want to cut this back really neat where it looks professional. And I want to try to do some hack job, even though it is. <laughs> I'm going to try to make it look as hackish as little as possible. Oh! Why I'm trying to do this like that, I have no idea. So much better. You know, I was joking around about electrical earlier, but I know a little bit about it. This is some big old wire here. I kind of hate to lose a half a foot of my uh, of my cord like this, but I don't, that's all. I, that's the only thing I can do. I really don't have any. Yeah, that's still going to be plenty of cord. And I'll use these three wires to connect these two. Well, I just want to make sure I leave myself enough. I think I'm going to go back just a little bit more. I would hate to waste this and then have to do it again. I'd rather take an extra few inches now than waste this and have to start all over. That should be plenty no matter how difficult that turns out to be. These are my jumper wires. These are gonna go from one receptacle to the other. All right, now, the way I understand this, it doesn't matter which one I do with white and black, as long as I keep them the same. All right, after a quick conference call to my electrician buddy, I'm told that as long as I keep the white consistent, like on the big blade and the black on the small blade and do that on that end, nothing else matters. Something about single phase, two hots coming out of the transformer, something. Anyway, it is what it is. He said keep them the same, it won't matter. So that's what we're doing. So that's the ground. Now, just for consistency's sake, I am going to make the big blade the white one. Just like so. I'm sure some of y'all out there that know about electronics are laughing. I never have really understood the whole phase thing, you know. But I'm going to go study it. Anytime I don't know something, I go learn it. And that way, next time, I know what, how it works. Because I, I, I'd rather not just be told what to do. I'd rather understand what I'm doing so next time I can do it without asking. I, I don't, for some reason, I'm not one that really likes asking for help a lot of times. It's just me. I'm sure some of you are like that too. I must say though, these wires are going in there really nice. And again, I'm not as left-handed as it gets. Here I am turning a screwdriver with my left hand. And that's about as difficult as it gets. Pretend like y'all didn't see that. <laughs> I just grabbed the wrong side. I can flip it around. See if I can tighten this up. And I'm sure we don't need to go all full gorilla on this. Probably just snug this up a little bit. Oh, I like how that fits under there. And that would be it right there. Well, I didn't get to practice my tap and die like I was hoping, but this worked out perfect. And the white will go to the big blade. Black will go to the small blade. Making sure that's all the way stuck in there.
All right, the next step was to put on these really cool industrial looking plate covers that I got and they don't work. They don't fit with these boxes at all. Unfortunately. And we are back. It's actually the next morning. It got dark on me last night, so I wasn't able to finish the project. So where we left off is I went to put these plug covers on and they did not fit. The holes don't line up and they didn't completely cover all the way around this corner. So I ran to the hardware store right before I got done last night to try to find some new ones. <laughs> The poor guy there, he was trying to find the right plug cover for this. He was literally picking up covers that had a square opening, trying to hold it up to see if it would fit. <laughs> God bless him. He was clueless. So I ended up finding them. And what I ended up going with are these. I think these should go right on there and fit perfectly. And I should be able to attach that right there. And I believe that's going to work. And it's going to look really good too, I believe. So we're going to get our little package of screws out of here and see if we can make this work. Now, the back edge of this is really, really sharp. And it does stick down just a little bit. I think I'm going to soften this edge just a little bit right here before I put this on. Just trying to think how the best way to do that would be. I mean, it is sharp. There we go. Just a little touch up. <laughs> this is so awesome. That one felt like it had a little burr on it. Didn't want to go in. Something's not right. I'm not going to force one of these screws in and strip this and then have to start over. Oh, that doesn't feel good at all. Uh, it's always something. So I've got this three millimeter. I'm trying to see if the threads line up on that. And it doesn't look like they do. I was going to take my tap set and recut these threads man why can't stuff just work if I have to pull all of this apart because they didn't cut threads correctly I am not gonna be very happy about it you know it's the stuff like this that just eats up the time Stuff built just as cheap as they can freaking build it. And we're left to pick up the pieces and try to fix this crap. <laughs> okay, so an hour after fighting with one screw because they didn't thread it correctly I finally got it finished I ended up basically having to hammer that screw in screw it a little ways hammer it in because it kept stripping the threads out because the the threads aren't cut clean and I didn't have a, a thread chaser so that I could chase those threads out not that small but anyway it's in there it'll probably never come out right but I'm probably never gonna have to take it out I didn't want to have to put a wood screw in there and have it different or something like that. That stuff drives me crazy. But they're in. Now the next item on the agenda is to figure out the other end of the plug and install this end on it. You know, I'm a little bit worried about this frying my welder or my plasma or something. I wish I had a way to test this and make sure it's right before I plug my machines into it. I may figure out how to take my multimeter and test it. Alright, so what I'm doing, I have to make the green, the ground longer 
and the other two shorter because it fits in like this. Oh, this is hard on my hands. plug I don't really like that gap right there I may end up filling that in with a little silicone once I find out this thing really works I may take just a little silicone and fill that in I don't like how that's just open all right after a couple of quick Google searches it does appear that the white and black can be switched each one is, I think, what they called a pole, and however it comes in, it comes in. So it's gonna be fine the way it is. I'm super confident now after looking at that that that's exactly what we've got. Good. That means that I got this hooked up right. Nothing blew up or caught on fire or shorted out or damaged any of my machines. Now, my line of thinking as I was hooking this up is, which one of these machines would I rather short out and mess up? Would I rather mess up my Everlast or would I rather mess up my plasma cutter? And I picked my plasma cutter because I bought it off of Amazon. And if something would have went wrong with it, I could have just shipped it back and Amazon would have sent me a new one. And here's what everything is going to look like, all stored away. I've got some zip strips holding this extra cord that I'm never going to need now against the cart. And then I have my plasma torch and my ground wire right here where it's easy for removal. And this will always stay just like this, right here. Well, this has been a great project. How handy is it going to be to have 220 right here on my cart? I can plug the cart in, have both my machines hooked up at the same time. I'm not going to run them at the same time, but to have them hooked up so that I don't have to switch plugs. Well, I'll link everything that I use today in the description below if you guys want to check that out. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and join our great community we have here on this channel. And give me a thumbs up because you know it means a lot to me. Thank you guys.